What's going on everyone? Anthony Drew Gary here, host of the How To Show, where we talk about optimizing life, money, and happiness one how-to at a time. I read an article recently that suggested that right now there are more people who are quitting their jobs than any time in recent memory, and so I wanted to spend some time talking about that concept, uh, really, in terms of how to quit your job. So the short answer to the question of how do you quit your job is you do it with integrity, but I want to make sure we unpack it a little further so that, uh, that we can talk about the different things you want to do beforehand, during, and really after to, to make sure that you're handling this both uh, professionally and, and really in a wise manner. And this runs the gamut anywhere. If you're somebody who is you know in just a, a part-time seasonal role all the way up to an executive level of a company, you still want to handle this with integrity. You don't want to be sitting in a situation where you think, oh, this isn't a permanent job anyway, I'll just quit. You want to do things uh, with a, a sense of, of purpose, a sense of dignity, and you want to ultimately make sure that there isn't any ill will towards you when you leave an employer. So the, the first things we're really going to talk about today are, what's your plan? You know, how, do you, how do you decide that you want to quit your job? And I think the most important thing that I can suggest here is to do not quit your job until you have a plan until you either know where you're going first, you have an idea, you have some sort of windfall that you're going to be able to, to cover yourself on, I wouldn't recommend just quitting a job and then having no plan. Not a good idea overall. And so you, you start to think about these things in terms of getting a, a backup plan in place and then breaking the news to your new employer. And so typically this comes in the form of telling them in one way or another, I would personally recommend that regardless of what sort of position in, you write something down. And formally, I guess you could call this a resignation letter, but it doesn't have to be anything long or fancy. You know, this could be, you know, to your employer or to your specific manager. Uh, I regret to inform you that I have accepted a different position uh, that will cause me to resign from my position here. My last day of work will be blah, blah, blah date. I really appreciate everything you've done for me over the time that I've been working here. Very thankful for the opportunity I've had. Very truly yours, sign your name at the bottom. I recommend typing it out, printing it out, uh, or at least writing it down so that they can have something tangible rather than, uh, than hearsay that says, oh, did you hear so-and-so is, is quitting? This, this gives it a little bit more uh, legitimacy, and so it's something that human resources can have just to, to make sure that the, the paperwork starts moving and that they know what to expect on, on their end. And ultimately this doesn't take a whole lot of your time and so I recommend doing it. And so when we talk about that last day, uh, we, we wanna give notice here and, and typically you'll, you'll hear people or you'll search the internet, you'll find two weeks notice. And for some positions that might be adequate. You're gonna have to dig deep and decide is two weeks enough time for somebody to get up to speed and take over your tasks and the likely scenario to that, the, the longer you've been in a job, the more likely that that's not the case. Two weeks probably isn't enough. So maybe you consider three weeks here. Maybe you consider a little more, and especially if it's been an employer that you've been uh, associated with for a long time, you've been working for them a while, they've been good to you over the years, try to be good back to them. It ultimately, it's the, the law of abundance. You don't want to leave anybody hanging, even if it's an employer that, uh, that you want to get to, uh, away from and, and move on to something new. And so you just want to make sure that you are giving enough notice to, to properly hand off that job or those tasks to somebody else. So as we think about this, uh, something that comes to mind is, well, what do I do with all my vacation days that I've banked up? The reality is that once you give your notice, you're going to have all the eyes in the world on you. And so realistically, this, this may seem controversial to some but you need to make sure that you're using your vacation days before you give your notice. And you need to do this in such a way that you don't draw any extra attention to yourself. You know, you don't want to be taking all of your vacation days and then three days later you take a sick day and two days after that you take another sick day and you get to the point where you have zero and zero left for your balances for those things. Uh, then uh, you probably won't need to write a, a letter of resignation. They'll probably already know and uh, there's a decent chance somebody will talk to you about it uh, before you have the opportunity to go out on your own terms. 
So just want to be mindful of how you use those days, but still use them because you did earn them throughout the year or however that situation is worked out in the, the company that you're with. So you, you want to make sure that you're not leaving that on the table. So inevitably, you're going to hand in your resignation letter and either your, your manager or your, some, some supervisor or somebody in human resources, they may ask you where you're headed, what's your next plan. And this can go one of two ways. You can either be transparent and, and tell them exactly where you're headed, and uh, that may not be a big deal. It, uh, it may be a larger deal, though, if you're leaving one company and heading to work for a direct competitor or heading to some other company where there, there might be an issue with, uh, with trade secrets or intellectual property. Uh, and, and in my personal experience, it usually works out if you, you tell them, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to hide anything from you, but I, I want to get settled into my new position, then I'll let you know where it is so that you can contact me if you ever need anything. The flip side to that is if you, uh, if you let it out of the bag that you are going to somewhere that is deemed a competitor, that two weeks may not play in as, as your notice or your transition. It's not out of the question that you could get walked out the door right away uh, and they'll just sever ties with you immediately. This becomes really important in your planning process because if you were banking on those extra two weeks or three weeks worth of income while you're transitioning your two weeks or three weeks notice job onto somebody else, you don't want to be walked out the door and then left without two or three weeks worth of pay that you might have been anticipating you would have. So the, the next thing that we want to think about is what are we going to do about health care and retirement? So when you, when you change jobs, you need to, to figure out what your, what your health care looks like in the new position. Does it start right away? Does it start in 90 days? And what are you going to do to make sure, if this is important to you, if health care is something that you need to make sure that you have all the way through, personally, I would recommend at least looking at these options, that you, uh, you need to have a plan in place for that. And so you can either look into the, the previous employer's COBRA, which tends to be really expensive, or you can look into some sort of healthcare sharing ministry, it tends to be a little less expensive. And uh, even some of the employers have the ability to, to retroactively buy the COBRA. And so let's say two months after you've left that job, something, something happens to you. In some instances, you can retroactively buy into the COBRA so that whatever happened to you gets covered. This is something that you want to dig into to make sure you understand and just don't go, uh, don't go into this with your head in the sand. Make sure that you've got a plan in place covered for healthcare. And then when we get to retirement accounts, uh, you need to do a little bit of research to figure out, you know, if you've got a 401k or a 403b, something like that, that's employer sponsored, what does it look like to leave that account with the old employer? Uh, you know, it's possible you're, you've got a good 401k right now, it's got good funds in it, you've been happy with it, something like that. But if you leave that company, do the fees change? Are you still assess the same low fees you've been having for years and years or however long it's been? Or do the fees increase because uh, you're basically dead weight on the company's books at that point, you're not employed with them? And so this is something that you wanna think about to make sure you have a plan in place. If it turns out that the fees are higher once you leave the company or anything like that, typically you can roll these accounts over into different, uh, different accounts. For example, you can roll a 401k into a traditional IRA uh, you can roll a Roth 401k into a Roth IRA. Uh, with a little bit of help from one of the custodians, uh, you can t get that done pretty easily. If you don't know what a custodian is, check out my video from last week on how to invest in the stock market. That will tee you up to be able to talk about those things intelligently. And so the last thing that I want to talk about in terms of how to quit your job is how to handle the idea of you giving in your resignation notice and your boss or your human resources department coming back to you and asking you, well, what would it look like if we sweetened uh, your incentives or your pay or something? What would it look like? How could we keep you? You want to have an answer to that before you're asked that question, because if you get caught off guard with that, there's a chance you may say something that you didn't intend to say. And so you just want to be having that discussion in the back of your mind. If you have a, if you have a job offer from a new company, and your, your old company offers to either match or exceed that new job offer, what are you going to do about that? And you need to know the answer to that before you give your resignation because you don't want to be ad-libbing this situation. Sometimes it may make sense to stay. Sometimes it may make sense to go with your original plan and leave that company. 
You just want to make sure that you know what your plan is before you enter into that sort of dialogue. And so if, uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you are looking to quit your job, hopefully this video gives you some, some tactics to make sure that you're doing it with integrity, which is what we stressed in the beginning of this video, because quite frankly, everybody talks about how life is short, but in the world of employers and employment, life can be long. You never know when there's a possibility that somebody you're working with right now could be working either for you or could, could be looking to hire you in the future, uh, be it with the same company, be it with a different company. There is no good reason to burn a bridge, and so to the extent you can avoid it, I recommend doing so. That's going to bring this episode of the show to a close. Hopefully there was something actionable in there. If you're job hunting or if you're looking to quit your job, you can use something in this video to your benefit and to make sure you're doing things in a way that uh, makes you feel good, makes you be able to sleep at night. If you've got any ideas to sweeten up this video, to improve it in any way, if you've got any feedback from things that you've done or just uh, experienced in your life, leave a comment. Uh, people read the comments, believe it or not. So when you add something to the video, it adds to the conversation for everybody involved. If you got any value out of the video, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It will let them know that this is a video worth watching so that they can share it with other folks. And if you personally know anybody in this situation, share the video with them so that they can get some value from it as well. Hit the subscribe button and you'll be the first to know about new videos each and every Wednesday. And if you are a podcast listener instead, you can find me on the player of your choice searching Anthony Drew Gary or The How To Show, and hopefully you enjoy those if that's the, the medium that you typically listen to me on. Until next time, this is Anthony Drew Gary, host of The How To Show, signing off.